Welcome to everybody um, on this very special Sunday in Advent as we approach Christmas. And uh, uh, welcome to everybody and those of you who haven't been before. Um, it, it's pretty informal. Um, and now I think we have a taping of the Advent wreath, if that's correct. Good day and welcome to St. Christopher's Church. During this season of Advent, we are following the light leading to Christmas. Last week, we lit the candle of hope. And this week, it's a candle of peace. Peace is a gift that we must be prepared to work for. God gives us the gift of peace and in turn, we need to take it and apply it to our own lives. As we light this candle today, the candle of peace, we ask that God's peace would dwell in our hearts, in our homes, in our communities, and indeed, all around the world. Raquel is now going to light the candle of peace. Loving God, we thank you for this Advent season. Come, fill us with your peace so that you will find us waiting and watching in peace when Jesus comes at Christmas. Peace is flowing like a river, flowing out from you and me, flowing out to everybody going to make all people free. Thank you. And now we'll go to our opening prayer. God of joy and cheer, we thank you for your servant, the good Bishop Nicholas, in loving the poor, he showed us your kindness. In caring for your children, he revealed your love. Make us thoughtful without need of reward so that we too may be good followers of Jesus. Amen. And now to our gospel reading. A reading from Matthew 25, 35 to 40, gifting to others. Jesus said, for I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will ask him, Lord, when did we see you hungry? and feed you, or thirsty, and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick, or in prison, and go to visit you? The king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Holy word, holy wisdom, thanks be to God. Good morning, everybody. Um, that particular reading, uh, which was read two weeks ago as well, uh, John picked it for his last Sunday at St. Christopher's. And uh, I had already picked it for St. Nicholas Day about a month or so before. And I decided that maybe we should read it again because uh, Nicholas tried to live that particular part of the gospel of Jesus. So today, if there was a message or a theme in my sermon, it would be uh, that we are following the spirit of Nicholas. And 
the sermon itself would be more of a show and tell. And the, uh, I'm just going to show you, well, I will tell you first, and then I will show you the show and tell part. In this sermon, I'm going to show you a wood carving, an orange, and a wall plaque. And each of these will describe how the spirit of Nicholas is living with us and through us today. So let's begin with the wood carving. And I trust that you can all see this wood carving. Uh, it was also uh, printed in our email blast this week, uh, both I think certainly on the Friday, as long with the letter. And if you've not read it, I would suggest that you would. Uh, this particular carving was done by a member of our parish, Leo Podetz, who did a lot of carving, as you know, he's a great wood carver. And uh, a couple of days ago, I phoned Jean to wish her a happy birthday and uh, mention this carving. So I've sent her a copy of the letter and she is going to read it to Leo, who is in uh, a home. The interesting thing about this particular carving is that there are two symbols here that I would like for us to concentrate on. The first is the satchel, the bag, the sack carried by Nicholas, and the other is the staff or the crozier. Nicholas was a wealthy person who gave away most of his money. He would find a cause and then anonymously make the donation. He did this to a parent who had three daughters and no diary for their weddings. And so he would drop bags of gold into, uh, through the window so that the uh, poor family could at least afford a diary for their daughter. He dropped in bags of gold. We don't probably drop many bags of gold into people's windows or houses. And so in the satchel for most people, it's the second symbol that I want you to notice, and that's this one, the orange. The orange has become for Nicholas and those who continue his spirit, the symbol of giving. I never thought about this before, but each time now that you see an orange, think of what you can do in your gift giving to others. The interesting thing about Nicholas is that he did not want anybody else to know what he was doing. And Michael just gave a description of some of the ways that we can be involved in the next few weeks at St. Christopher's with uh, family gift giving and certainly the food. And it occurred to me that when we give something like this, we do not know who the recipient is going to be. And the recipient will never know who the donor was. And so in many ways, that's the way that we carry on the tradition of Nicholas. In fact, over 250 children will be the recipients of gifts from St. Christopher's this year. And add to that all the other donations that you make, either to individuals or through groups, through associations, that will help other people. And that's what's known as carrying on the tradition and the spirit of St. Nicholas. Now I mentioned earlier, the crozier or the staff of Nicholas, which I hope you can see, that we had a bishop once who came for a confirmation class and he had his this crozier, which looks like a shepherd's crook, unlike the one that's here on Nicholas. And he said, they call this the bishop's crook, but never call me a crooked bishop. 
None of the kids laughed because I think they were too scared. It's interesting that uh, Jesus should select the good shepherd as a symbol of his life. In the same way that since then, it's been the symbol for bishops. And in fact, Leo made the closure for several bishops in Niagara Diocese. The shepherd is to guide, direct, help, protect people in the same way uh, bishops do. In that reading from the gospel, uh, I've always thought about it as being doing things for people. And so this week I started to think about going beyond the physical. And the one phrase that stuck out for me was the one, I was in prison and you visited me. Not a physical prison. I wanted to get my mind away from that. And so I began to think about Nicholas and the way that he tried to bring people out of the prisons in which they were imprisoned in their life. And we've done the same. We imprison people by their nationality, by their intelligence, by their skin color, by their sexuality, by their status, and many other ways. And part of the role carrying on the spirit of Nicholas is to release people from these prisons. And in some ways, it's releasing ourselves. It's bringing peace. The second candle today, bringing peace, not just within ourselves, but also within the lives of many people. At one o'clock today, we're going to have another uh, session regarding uh, anti-black racism. And I hope that you've had a chance to read Amy's uh, summary of the meeting that we had back in November. And she identifies uh, three themes that we need to uh, tackle here at St. Christopher's. She says, systemic racism builds some people up while tearing other people down. We do that by our words, our actions, and maybe it happens first in our minds. Then she goes on to say that we as uh, a parish at St. Christopher's should be taking leadership to be responsible to, in her words, walk the talk. Then she identifies as the third one, personal awakening. Going within, going within ourselves to examine ourselves, to see what is it that we're doing to continue imprisoning people. And then one of my favorites, education. I think education is the answer to many of the world's problems. But for us to look at the current as well as the historical systems that have kept people of color in prison. So I certainly hope that you will join us this afternoon because in doing that, we are carrying on the tradition of St. Nicholas and his spirit. On many occasions in his life as a bishop, he intervened for people who were ready to be imprisoned physically in some cases and mentally and spiritually in others. Because we want the spirit of Nicholas to continue in what we're doing. So I want to end with a little personal uh, story. <clears throat> Some years ago, I was in a parish and Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, we had six church services. So by noon on Christmas Day, when I arrived home, I was ready to relax. And the door opened and our daughter said, Dad, I want you to take me to Jonathan's house. And of course, my first question was, why? And she said, at church that morning, uh, Jonathan asked if she believed in Santa Claus. At that time, she was about two years, three years, maybe older than, 
uh, Jonathan, so I guess he thought she was the fountain of all wisdom. And she thought about this, I guess, and answered him. And when she came home, on our wall was this plaque, which some of you may be familiar with. I know you can't read the writing, but as long as you can see the plaque, that's the, that's the great thing. I'll read it in a minute. It was in the days before iPads and iPhones and all that sort of thing. So Karen did a handwriting copy of what's on this plaque. And so we got in the car, drove to Jonathan's house. She went in. She came back with a great smile on her face because she had said to him, in her words and in her writing, this is the spirit of Nicholas. And so this is how, this particular quotation is, where is Santa Claus? And it's interesting, when I read this, you'll know that some of these things we cannot do because of COVID, but we can do it virtually. So where they mention things that we do physically, just think that we can do these things virtually. So this is what our daughter gave to Jonathan to help him in his quest for the spirit of Nicholas. Where is Santa Claus? He's seen in the smiles the whole world is sharing. He's found where there's friendship and loving and caring. He's felt in warm handshakes when people are meeting. He's heard in the cheer of a Christmas time greeting. His spirits behind all the gifts we receive, he's everywhere, always to those who believe. And for those of us who believe in Nicholas, Nicholas' spirit and the spirit of God can be found everywhere, always to those who believe. The foundation of Nicholas's life was also built on prayer, and we continue in that spirit now as Christian leads us in our prayers. Emmanuel, God with us. Your people falter in the darkness yearning for your light. In the midst of that darkness, rekindle our hope. As we long for peace in the midst of strife, loving God, be with us. As we pray for an end to the pandemic, for a safe and accessible vaccine, and for the well being of all your people worldwide, loving God, be with us. As we pray for families to be reunited, the families of migrant farm workers, of refugees, of Mexican and Central American children warehoused all over the US, of children waiting to be adopted, where parents are serving away from home, where illness separates loved ones. Loving God, be with us. Be with us as we pray for lands to be restored, letting go of our sense of entitlement and sharing a deep commitment with First Peoples to Turtle Island as a home for all, loving God, be with us. Be with us. As we pray for kindness and compassion, treasuring community and relationships above all else, loving God, be with us. Be with us. God of peace, Restore us to right relationship with one another. Bring light and joy into our darkness. May your love transform a hurting world with peace and justice across all boundaries, borders, barriers, and brokenness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so we continue with the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, 
your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our um, hymn this morning is taken from the world of uh, pop music. It was written in uh, the 80s and uh, made popular by uh, Amy Grant. Uh, it's sung here today by a uh, member of the St. Christopher's Band, uh, Ray Ann Dingwall. I hope you enjoy. It's called My Grown Up Christmas List, and I'm sorry that you don't have the words to it. Please listen closely. They're they're very good for today. Do you remember me? I sat upon your knee. I wrote to you with childhood fantasies. Well, I'm all grown up now and still need help somehow. I'm not a child, but my heart still can dream. So here's my lifelong wish. My grown-up Christmas list Not for myself, but for a world in need No more lives torn apart That wars would never start And time would heal
I, I think the, uh, the writer of that particular song captured the uh, spirit of Nicholas, and uh, it's a great prayer as well that goes out. And we're now going to say uh, the closing prayer, which picks up on that message, and another uh, person, Richard of Chichester, who composed this prayer, probably too had captured the spirit of Nicholas uh, in his day. And uh, hopefully that we can catch it in ours as well and continue with it. Let's say together, thanks be to you, my Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. O most merciful redeemer, friend and brother, may I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. And our blessing begins with the Advent blessing from the Book of Alternative Services. And this will be followed again by uh, the ringing of the bell, and then we go into our chat rooms, and then later on to the big chat room. Our Advent blessing. Be steadfast in faith joyful in hope, untiring in love, all the days of your life. And on this day that we remember the candle of peace, the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day, this week, this Advent, and forevermore. Amen. Amen.